Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from TrainSignal. The following clip is from TrainSignal's Windows Server 2008 Applications Infrastructure course, featuring nearly 8 hours of Applications Infrastructure training. And now I'm going to go over here into the role section. You see that Hyper-V has been successfully added. And it's going to take just a little bit for this guy to load up here for a second. I'll expand this and click on the Hyper-V Manager, which is where we go to to actually create any new and manage any existing Hyper-V machines. All right, so here we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just uh, create a new Hyper-V machine real quick. It's not going to take very long. I'm going to come over here to this new button. You see we have all kinds of stuff over here. We can import virtual machines. We can get into Hyper-V settings. Of course, we don't really have anything to set up yet. Virtual Network Manager. You know what? Let's take a look at that real quick. Here is my uh, virtual network that I created during the whole Hyper-V installation process. So I don't have to create a new one unless I have some really interesting reason to do so. But I want to come down here and just look at the the connection type real quick. I just want to mention this to you here. Um, the external connection type is a real network connection, exactly what you would think of as a network connection to be. It provides local access as well as internet access. Uh, internal only allows me to only talk to machines on my network, does not provide me internet access. And then private virtual machine network keeps the network connections only on the internal side of the actual physical server. You can't get to the outside world at all. You can really only talk to other virtual machines that are on that physical machine. All right, so let's go ahead and let's close that out. Just wanted to kind of give you that quick look here. Let's go ahead and let's make a new one. I'm going to click on New and select a virtual machine here. And, you know, this wizard is really super nice. It makes creating virtual machines really super fast and really super easy. All right now you see I have actually two options here. I can click on Finish or I can cr click on Next to create a virtual machine with a custom configuration. So I could create a virtual machine real quick with default values. Let's go ahead and click on Finish and let's see what those values actually look like. Wow, that was really super fast. <laughs> now when you create a new blank virtual machine, there is no operating system installed on it. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. Let's go here to the file menu for this virtual machine and click on settings. I just want to see what it actually did set up here real quick. Uh, initially it's going to try to boot from the CD. It set it up with a half a gig of RAM, one virtual processor. And by the way, if you have multiple processors on your motherboard, you can actually utilize them. Let's take a look here on, at the virtual hard drive, new virtual machine.vhd. That's that VHD file I was talking to you about. But look where it put it. C users public documents. That's not really where I want it to be at. I want my virtual hard disk files to be on that separate hard drive that we configured a little earlier in this video. So I'm actually going to stop this right here at this point in time. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and to close this virtual machine. And actually, I, didn't, I really don't think I even want this virtual machine. So <laughs> I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to select uh, turn off because I don't need to shut it down because there's no operating system on it to so turn off. And now I'm just going to go ahead and remove the server. I, I don't want it. I don't need it. All right, there we go. All right, so you see it kicks me back out to the introduction item. I need to come back over here and click on connect to server. I'm going to be connecting to the local Hyper-V server, which is the machine that I'm on. No big surprise here. I could connect to another Hyper-V server if I had another one in my network, but obviously... Uh, I don't because we only have a domain controller and this machine. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tell that OK. Looks like it didn't uh, didn't delete it like it should. So I'm going to right click on that new virtual machine that I created and select delete. And it's going to tell me that this action deletes the virtual machines but does not delete any virtual hard, dis hard disks. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that hard disk later on. I'll just have to go search for the VHD file. Let's go, let's make another new virtual machine here real quick. And this time I'm actually going to go through the entire wizard because I want to be able to name my virtual machine. And we're going to call this new virtual machine uh, WDS server. I'm going to store the virtual machine in a different location this time. I'm going to go ahead and browse here real quick. I do want to store it in the VHD storage disk that we created earlier, absolutely. 
and it will actually create a folder for me so I don't need to create a new folder right now so I'm going to cancel out so G will be just fine it does tell us that if you plan to take snapshots of this virtual machine select a location that has enough free space I mentioned snapshots to you earlier because they're so awesome I mean they will literally save you so much time especially when you are monkeying around with different things but when you take snapshots, those snapshots take up disk space. If you take enough snapshots, they can eat up your disk space pretty fast. So keep that in mind as you are uh, thinking about implementing snapshots. Half a gig of RAM is good enough for a Windows deployment server. So 512, there's no reason to increase or decrease that. Not to mention that half a gig of RAM is what you absolutely have to have in order for a Windows Server 2008 installation. All right, so let's tell it next. So now what we need to do is we need to decide what kind of network is it going to be connected to. Well, we have that uh, virtual network we set up with our very first networking controller, or actually I should say our second networking controller in the physical machine. By applying this virtual network that I created back during the installation process, I'm going to be allowing this machine to talk to the outside world and to the local network. I want to tell it next. And now I need to create a virtual hard disk and WDS server is going to be just fine. And 127 gigs is probably good enough. I could always increase that, but I do have a maximum of 2,040 gigabytes. Uh, that's probably more than sufficient to have it be 127 gigs. Now, if you have an existing hard disk that you want to utilize, you could actually attach it here. Or you could always attach a virtual hard disk later on if you're not quite sure, if you don't remember a particular location. Now this is particularly useful. Remember how I was talking to you about how you want two hard disks, one for your host system and then one for your virtual hard disk files and your virtual machines in case your primary operating system takes a dive. You can just pull out your hard disk that contains your virtual hard disk files, pop it into a new Hyper-V server and attach any virtual hard disks or you can just import the virtual machines alright so kinda keep that in mind for disaster recovery I'm gonna go ahead and tell it next I'm going to install an operating system from a boot CD or DVD ROM and I'm just gonna go ahead and use the DVD that's in my DVD drive I could also use an image file or an ISO file too so if you download ISO files from say TechNet or Microsoft.com you can actually use those ISO files to boot up with if they're bootable ISO files. If you have an older operating system that you want to install, say like Windows NT, for instance, you could actually use a virtual floppy disk. Probably not going to be a huge amount of need for Windows NT in this day and age, but just in case you do, you can actually use virtual floppy disks. Or you can also install an operating system from a network-based installation server like the one we're going to be creating in the next video. Well, that's not what we want to do just yet because we don't have the WDS. We're creating that Windows Deployment Services server right now. So we're going to install the operating system from the DVD until it next. It'll give us a quick look about what's going to happen. And now we're going to tell it to finish.